mask and guns on. What was you thinking at they that? They violated it. That's the first thing I thought. I seen them swing the door open and three of them came in with their guns out. And I looked and I was upset. And I just that's why I said, yo, yo, all right, all right, you got it. Because they came straight towards the pulpit. You know what I mean? They came straight towards the pulpit to, to where I was. And um, that's the first thing that I seen, man. You know, it's like they violated. I, I, they just, they violated. And I got down on the floor. And the reason why I got down on the floor is so that my ministry... So they violated you? They violated the they church. Violated God? They violated the they church. Violated the church. It ain't about me. You know what I'm saying? Yo, yo, Joe, I'm outside, man. I, I'm outside. I, I don't, I, I'm outside. You know, you y'all could have did that outside. You didn't have to come into the house, house of the Lord. I'm outside. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hiding from nobody, you know, and, and it's an ultimate violation to come into the church, right? We, we, we not, we not promoting violence. We're not promoting violence. We promoting peace. We promoting forgiveness. We promoting an understanding with God. And then I see three masked men coming in with their guns drawn, telling everybody to don't move, don't move, don't move. That's violation. So therefore, I got down and I told my church, y'all get down. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, if they got three guys with guns and they all, they, they, they cornered the church, the one in the back had the, the men with, or at gunpoint, and then the two up front had the front at gunpoint. So at the end of the day, ain't nothing you could do. Now yeah. they robbed your wife. And they put it, uh, and, they, and they put the gun to my, my eight month old daughter face, cause my my daughter was in her arms, and I'm I'm laying down there watching it. And so all this is like slow motion, surreal to you. You watching your wife getting robbed, gun to your daughter's face. Uh now Bishop, right? Because the the the, the thing I said to you, with. Like, it doesn't sound preacher-like when you say you, they violated, right? And the thing I say to you is, right, you a man of God, do you forgive these guys? Yeah, I forgive them, man. But, Joe, you got to understand, right, when you say violating is not a preacher word, let me just because I'm a preacher, it doesn't change my language. It changed my mindset. Right. And, and, and when you become a preacher, I, I hope that don't change your, your, your language. I hope it don't change who you are because you're going to attract a certain generation. Right. And, and I just think that there's a stigma that our language have to completely change. No, our mind have to change. The Bible says in Apostle Paul, he, in the Epistle of Paul, he says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. So at the end of the day, as long as my mind is set free, you know, I, I use certain language. So therefore, we will understand. I'm speaking to a certain culture. In the Old Testament, it was written in Hebrew. They were speaking to the Hebrew people. In the New Testament, it was written in Greek because they were speaking to the Romans. So at the end of the day, every language is suitable for whatever custom you're talking to, whatever people you're talking to. So everybody has a stigma of how I'm supposed to sound, how I'm supposed to dress, how I'm supposed to look. No, I'm supposed to look how God made me, and I'm going to preach the word of God. So yes, they violated. Yes, I was upset. Yes, I turned Brooklyn. Yes, I was up. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. Now, so, and so after I see that, I said, damn, man, they got the bishop, huh? And so immediately, everybody, I went to Brooklyn. I was out in Brooklyn. I'm telling you, bishop, I was out in Brooklyn. I told you this on the phone. And I asked a couple of cops. They were like, yo. That shit was a setup. I asked some gang dudes on the street. They was like, nobody violates the church. And it's kind of messed up that you get robbed, but people don't believe that you got robbed. They think you did this for this exact reason, that you're getting all this publicity all around the world, that everybody got you on the news. I saw you on the Spanish news with my mother and father. It was like, oh, they were going to Bishop in Nueva York. They, they had to go in the Telemundo, in the Spanish, with my mom's in Miami. And so they think Bishop is so flashy. He know what it is to turn up, to go viral, to go this. Could he have staged this? Now, 
I heard you just explain they put a gun to your baby's head. That's off limits, right? Every day. But I seen you in interviews after. And I'm thinking church. I'm thinking God. And so I get I see you get into it with a guy and a girl and you call him call, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Joe. I didn't call him homosexual, oh. Joe. I called him I called him a faggot. That's what I called him. All right, Joe. But let me let, let me let me let me let me touch on this real quick, Joe, right? Because um I want to say this, right? The reason why do you not and I'm not trying to go there, but do you think gay people are no, not but, but, people but, of God? No, but faggot doesn't God mean God. gay people. It means a bag of sticks. That's what that really means, right? If if you if you want to get technical, That's no, I'm, I'm talking about Joe. If you want to yep. get technical, man. If you really want to get technical, all right? They hear bag of sticks. You know what I'm saying? He's soft, right? I I I don't have nothing against the uh the LGBTQ community at all. When I was running for bold president, they were supporting me. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have nothing against them. I have I have people in my church that was um was once that and now have changed. So like I don't have nothing against it's their civil right to be who they want to be. I don't go, I don't let me tell you something. If I preach a All right, this question. So you believe that if a person so you don't believe a person is born gay, you believe a person can change? Like, cause I see these things all the time that the church think if you're gay, they can change you back to listen, not being gay. And listen, stuff. Joe, Do Joe you believe anybody that? can change. And let me say this. My belief and what the scripture teaches me is that you're not born with sin. There's no way you can be born with sin. And if the Bible says that, and I'm talking about the Bible, when my church asks me to teach about how, uh, what does God say about homosexuality, I got to teach the Bible. Okay, this is what I'm teaching the Bible. This is not my opinion. This is the Bible. The Bible says homosexuality is an abomination. So therefore, an abomination means a hatred to God. So therefore, why would God make you to already hate you? It doesn't make sense. It's not logic. So biblically, you, biblically, I'm just talking about biblically. Please, I don't want nobody getting mad with me. Biblically, it's impossible for you to be born already with sin. Impossible. Impossible. So let me just get back to the setup piece that you were saying. Let me tell you why people don't believe, don't believe that this could just happen because of what the media did. The media, oh, he was convicted. They start all the negative press, all the negative press to break down who I am and who I was allegedly. And now people are saying, yo, the street's saying that's a violation to the church. So therefore he went, he was a state before. He was in the streets before. You know what? This don't sound right. So it was a narrative that was built. At the end of the day, the truth is going to come out when these young men uh, um, get captured. And I've been praying for them. I forgive them, right? I forgive them. If, if they came and said, we need prayer, I will pray with them. I will pray with them. Because at the end of the day, we all make mistakes. And that was a grave mistake that they made. It was a grave mistake that they made. And at the end of the day, who am I not to forgive? Like, 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 I'm not, a, like, I wasn't a sinner. Like, I, I don't fall short. Who am I? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15, if you forgive your trespasses, then I will forgive you your trespasses. But if you don't forgive the, your trespasses, then I won't forgive you yours. So at the end of the day, if I don't forgive, then I can't be forgiven. So at, so at the end, it, it, it makes sense, uh, Joe. And my ministry, the way I dress, the way I move, is to encourage other younger people that yo, you can still love Jesus and 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 look dope. My Jesus is dope to me. My Jesus is not traditional. My God is not traditional. My God is style is not like corny. No, women are not coming with slips anymore. Right, the whole fashion has changed. It's changed. The way we teach has changed. So at the end of the day, I want to be able to encourage somebody else that you know what. Yo, God love me too. Have you been confronted by uh, other pastors and preachers and people calling you from around the country, telling you they hope you're right? How's your family? Have you gotten like well wishes yeah, I got from well all wishes the other from churches? A lot of pastors, a lot of pastors, and I got a lot of love for the streets too, man. From the streets, man, they've been seeing me and they've been saying we support you, Bishop, and. You know, so that that was really that was really powerful and profound to me uh, of of how the um, the community is responding to me, 
And, um, you know, Joe, it's not easy, man. It's not easy. It's not easy to go against the go against the grain. You know what I mean? It's not easy. Like I'm not a traditional preacher. I'm a completely different preacher. My style is completely different. My approach is completely different. You know, Fabio Farron is one of my mentees. You know, a lot of these rappers are my mentees. I, I have long conversations with them, and I help them out a lot, man. Like I do other things, man, out here in this community. You know, and um, and you know my ministry. My ministry is to bridge the gap between the streets and the church, between politics and the church. And that's why I try to educate them on something more than just the streets, man. That, that's just me. Well, that's your question. You, did, earlier you said you right. didn't get paid for preaching, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, that, that, and, and in this interview, if I watched it and it wasn't Fat Joe and the Bishop, that would make me go, hmm. Right, so everybody's misjudging you because you're flashy, you just fly, you young, and so. But you said, "Listen, man, I got businesses. I don't take money from the church." Now, the the only other question to ask you, which is an elephant in the room, is, "Was the jury insured?" Joe, I I, I can't I can't get into that league. That's legal. I can't get into that, Joe. I can't I can't get into that, man. That's that that's that's for legal purposes, huh? I <laughs> Mine is. Mine's Yo, Joe, you crazy, man. Huh? Because we outside. Because we outside. So my jury, yeah. Joseph Carter Jr., yeah. right. is insured. No, I can't, can't answer. But answer. you know what? You know what, Joe? I'm going to tell you like this. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to answer for you, Joe, right? Because you my bro, right? Um, the majority of the pieces was not insured. The majority of the pieces were not insured. Mm -hmm. And um, um, the majority of, uh, because I had just changed up and bought some loose, I, and I have time to insure it. So about two pieces was insured. I'm, I'm keeping it real with you, man. I think two or three pieces was insured. That's it. But they took. All that is the moment. And that's why you come up on a fat joke. I mean, I think a lot of people uh, yeah. learned a lot about you today. And, and, and this is a great way for you to tell your story. Um, the part I want to know is, and I keep going back to this, is, right, because I just want to know. I'm curious, right? I'm curious. Um, and I'm going to tell you, I went in the water the other day. I was in um, St. Martin. And I believe that when you're out in the Caribbean, you go in the morning early before anybody's out there, and you just pray to God. You look at the clouds, you look at the water, you pray for everybody, all my sick friends, every this and this and that. Three words came out, right? Wrote it on my board, I never wrote this in my life, right? And it said organize, it said responsibility, and it said simplify. That's what it said to me while I was out there. When I got out of there, I felt great, felt like I cleansed myself. You know, and, and I wrote it. It's on the board here, right? And I never write nothing on the board. That's how powerful and how clear it came to me. I got a friend that's fighting for his life. And I've been right praying now. for him too, uh, and, Jeff. I've been praying for him. I got you, man. Jeff, thank you, man. You know, I told you, yep. I said pray for my brother Jeff. Uh, and, and I've been praying for him hard. And I went out there, you know, and I start praying. And so when I, when I tell you, uh, what I keep trying to ask you is, I know you've been going to church and you went before that. Was there a moment, just so I could know, okay? Was there a moment that you felt like, okay, I'm going to be a, a bishop, I'm going to be a, because obviously you from the street, you cut from the Brooklyn, you did your time like a man, you came back and you went to the church. How does someone say, I'm going to church? I'm 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 going to be a preacher. I'm going to be a pastor. Is it like a class, a course? Is it like you study the Bible more than somebody else? Like what qualifies someone as a pastor, a bishop? Like how do you can Fat Joe come tomorrow and say? I well, it's not that easy. But let me tell you this, Joe. It's simple. You just got to say one word. Yes. You got to say one word to God and say yes. 
And the Bible says, and this is what you need to read. You need to read Isaiah chapter six. The Bible says that God says from the throne, he says, who shall we send? And Isaiah said, send me, I'll go. And the Bible talks about how the cherubim, um, uh, excuse me, the seraphim, which is a praying angel, took one of the fires off of the altar and put it in his mouth. And the Bible said that the, that the, the coal burnt off of all of the iniquities because he was around a lot of sinful people. So at the end of the day, Joe, um, you know, th th there's a process to being a pastor. And, and, and you have to understand, you have to look at what I'm going through. What I'm going through is an attack by the enemy. There's something called the spirit of perversion. Okay. And the perversion is to destroy and distort God's original intent. That's what the spirit of perversion is. And I'm going to use you as an example. Through this whole time that we've been up here on this interview, there has been one question from you to ask about the health and wellness of the church. Why? Because the enemy has perverted this entire situation to make people believe that I'm not trustworthy. And you want to know what? My wife is still crying. My daughter does not want to wear earrings. My church is crying. I had to pay for therapy. And everybody allowed the enemy to pervert their mind off of what happened to God's house. What about protecting God's house? Why are we all looking at Bishop Whitehead? I'm just a man. I'm, I, I fall short of the glory of God. What happened to the, the, the glory of the Lord? What happened to that was the church? What happened to that? It doesn't matter. Nothing else but what happened to that. And it's a spirit of perversion. And the first thing that a shepherd does, if you ever want to be a pastor, you cannot leave your sheep. The first thing you have to understand is you have to always stay focused on God. I get so much hate mail. I get so much things like people posting right here, 90,000, 90,000, because there's something out there that says that I stole $90,000 from a parishioner. Now, I have, I have my ministry up here. Everybody that's in my ministry, have you ever saw or ever heard of that lady? Y'all know the lady that they said that Bishop took 90000 from. And I want y'all to see. Have y'all ever heard? And if you go to my, um, my Instagram, and I did it during my morning service, I said, have y'all ever heard of this woman? And they said, no, she's not a member of my church. She's not a member of my church. But I'm plastered everywhere that I took $90,000 from a parishioner of my church. And everybody, look, look, you're going to see the nose coming up because this is my church. We don't know her. We don't know her. Okay? And this is the p picture that they paint about me. Bro, listen, Bishop. I've made people millionaires personally. And so the way this works is you're born broke, you're born alone by yourself with no clothes, no nothing. I grew up in welfare in the projects. God blessed me and gave me an opportunity and I put a bunch of other people on. I've had people I made millionaires turn around, split up with me and say, I never gave them nothing. I never took care of them. I never took care of them. So I know all about walking through this, all this while being under the microscope of all this, everything you talk about, I done did this. Like, I done did this. And this is the very people that I've helped become millionaires and families and all that. And so um, I know what you're talking about, right? But I wanted you to come on here, not to point a finger at you, not to disrespect you, but to let you tell your true side of the story and talk to the people you say you're talking to. And so... That's why I invited you on here so I can, so they can learn. And I think this was great for you. And um, and I hope and pray your wife gets over it. Um, your daughter grows out of it. Uh, money could stop doing the freeze. What's my <laughs> man on the left? My man that preaches. That boy did the mem, the mean. You know them guys that go like this. <laughs> yeah, let, let, uh, Joe, can let me, Joe, yeah, I got you, Joe, let me say right? this, right, uh, because, you know, I don't know how much time before we get off, but let me just say this, right, Joe, um, we, we have lost focus on what actually happened, right, my church have been the victim, right, and I don't want this to be about me, right, and, and the truth is going to come out. Joe, do you know I'm going to be posting, right, right when we get off, and I'm going to let you hear it first. But I'm going to be posting 
some documentation, right? I'm going to be posting some documentation as soon as I get off, right? Because, you know, and I'm only going to give this dude some shine right now. And I don't even want to hear about this dude no more, right? So the incident that you're talking about where me and this guy had gotten in, into an altercation, right? His name is Larry Reed, right? So he is the Wendy Williams of gospel. Remember how Wendy Williams was back in the day? Ha! He is Wendy Williams on steroids, but he goes against the gospel community. Yeah, of gospel community. Yeah, nobody knows him in the secular world until he start hashtagging me and following me. And every day he's talking about me. So, so his name is Larry Reed, right? And it's the only shine I'm giving him because his numbers is going up because of me. But let me say this, because I got to make something clear. So he's been on his live talking about how the FBI has been watching me and this and going on and y'all watch and see what the FBI going to do because he got all this money and, and he's taking this from the church and this, this, that, and the third. But watch this, Joe. And I'm and you, and, and listen, Joe, you gave me the platform for this. I'm about to post some documents that Larry Reed is the one who's calling the FBI on me. So I'm going to post that on my page, right? And I'm showing you, Joe, that people right are doing this and trying to do me dirty just to get numbers they don't care about what my wife is going through they don't care my seven-year-old daughter said daddy you got robbed daddy she wasn't in church that day and she saw it on tv and she's scared she's scared and we got a dude like this that don't care about nothing so all of the larry reed fans i'm about to post it i'm about to post it and it's going to say that larry reed called the FBI on the, I'm paraphrasing, on Lamar Whitehead and X, Y, and Z. Okay, so at the end of the day, people are doing things for numbers, Joe. They doing things for numbers. So what do we call them, Joe? I don't even know what we call them now. Now listen, what I'm saying to you is this, right? Let's end in a positive note. Your top five preachers, bishops of all time. My top five? Uh, Miles Monroe, uh, T.D. Jakes, um, Bishop Noel Jones, um, hmm. I only got three, man. I only have three. That's yep. it. Miles Monroe, T.D. Jakes, and, um, and um, Bishop Noel Jones. Bishop Noel Jones. Yo, thank you so much for coming on here, man. Tell your wife, uh, God bless her, man, nothing but love. Matter of fact, why don't you end this with a little one-minute prayer for the people out here? It's a yeah. lot of people tuning in. And why don't you... Father God, we thank you for this set time. We set ourselves in agreement. We thank you, Lord Jesus. First of all, God, we thank you for your loving kindness for us better than life. Father God, forgive us for all known and unknown sins, transgressions, and iniquities that we may have committed against you. And we thank you for a great understanding today. Thank you for my brother, Fat Joe. And Father God, we lift up his friend Jeff in prayer, Father God. Allow your healing power to touch him, Father. For you say when two or three are gathered together, you're in the midst. So I ask you, Father God, to bless Fat Joe, Father God, for allowing the man of God to have his platform, God to show your glory. And Father God, I ask you, Father God, within the next 30 days, you give him increase. Deals from that he wasn't expecting, Father God, an uh, overflow of health and an overflow of money. For we believe that when you, when a man allow you to have his platform to get the glory, you will bless him. For the word say, for who you have justified, you have uh, sanctified. So we thank you right now, God, and we bless your name. In Jesus' precious name, amen.